Welcome to the second episode of Heritage Cooking. I am joined by my wonderful mother. And uh, today we're going to talk about eggs. Uh, Mom, I'm going to call this episode The Devil is in the Details. <laughs> uh, because we are, in fact, talking deviled eggs. Yes. Uh, you want to run us through a little... Uh, All right, first let's talk about eggs, all right, because we just came through Easter season where everybody's coloring eggs, and the reality is that eggs naturally come in a variety of colors, and no, red chickens don't make red eggs, and brown chickens don't make brown eggs, and so forth and so on. Eggs come in a whole myriad of colors, and it's just the breed of the chicken that makes a different colored egg. And um, so that's just one thing. You open up any egg, and it's going to be clear or yellowish and with a yellow yolk center. And then you cook it, and it's white and yellow. So anyway, and eggs have been around as long as people have been alive. People have been using eggs. They would harvest them wild um, from nests on the ground and in trees and then then they domesticated some of those tree loving chickens and they became domesticated chickens that laid eggs and people collected the eggs so a lot of folks believe that the um idea of making deviled eggs is part of a particular cultural tradition um eastern european perhaps but it's been around since the since forever and people finding ways to use eggs has been around forever and um in the um medieval days they were actually called stuffed eggs and they were more like a whole meal where you add lots of ingredients and then cook them again and it becomes the meal as opposed to what we know at least here in america as deviled eggs which is a creamy, luscious, tangy, pop it in your mouth and go kind of food. So, but we're talking today about deviled eggs. Do you have any well, idea how we got that that name, Rick, deviled eggs? You know, I'm, I'm going to assume it has something to do with uh, the spice inherent. Uh, um, a lot of the recipes and stuff that I found for like base deviled eggs. Are you kidding me? Lay down. <laughs> <laughs> he's put, he's put, Stop it. A lot of the recipes that I found for deviled eggs uh, call for a little bit of Tabasco uh, and then uh, some paprika on top. Right. Um, so it gives it a little bit of that kick. Yep. Well, the way that my mom always made deviled eggs is pretty much the standard, typical mayo mustard, you know, decorate the top deviled eggs. Um, there is a little twist difference in the way that my mom made her deviled eggs and that a lot of people do and again it was one of those I was in my adulthood before I realized anyone cut a deviled egg down the side <laughs> it was a shock to me <laughs> um, but I think in our recipes that we tried uh, with this episode we really ran the gambit of some different types of deviled i.e. stuffed eggs which was which is, was an interesting experiment I'll tell you what, uh, when I was done, I was not well. <laughs> the, uh, the eggs had the better of me. I ended up taking the balance of them to work because I, just, I, made, I made three dozen eggs and there's just too many eggs. Yep, your dad got fed all the ones I made and some of them he wouldn't eat, to be honest. <laughs> so they actually got fed to my chickens. <laughs> Turn about is fair play. That is. I don't know if you can do that. That's cannibalism. <laughs> no judgments here <laughs> so i, I want to start right off the top uh the idea of a boiled egg is is pretty simple or or so i thought um <laughs> and if you go online like, i had my way i was going to boil my eggs but i'm like all right well we're going to do the show i, I want to be able to talk to like is there a correct way to boil eggs? And, and man, there is not. <laughs> there is there's a thousand different ways to, to boil eggs. How did and, you end up doing it? So I do my, well, this time, because I had to do 36 eggs, uh, I did it in almost like a, uh, like a big wok. Uh, but normally what I'll do is just in a, in a um, just like a, my, my little stock pot. It's not called a stock pot, um, but it's my deeper, my deeper pot. Like a Dutch uh, Almost. Oh, it's yeah. got a handle on it. I don't know. There's probably a proper term for it, but yeah. 
it doesn't fit into any of the groups that I already know. So, <laughs> um, and I'll put, I don't know, like I fill it halfway with water. So once all the eggs are in there, it ends up being like inch and a half, two inches above the eggs. And, and I'll hit it with a ton of salt. Oh. Uh, and then I'll bring it to a boil. And as soon as it starts boiling, I'll drop it to a low heat and put a lid on it. Um, and then I usually forget about them. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, and then I'll put them directly into uh, a bowl of cold ice water mm. uh, and just let them sit there until I'm ready to deal with them. Uh, if they're going into the fridge to just use as, uh, as hard-boiled eggs, I'll, I don't know, whenever I get around to it. If I'm using them to cook for something, it's, they stay there until I'm ready to peel them. Okay. So. I I have very different ways of making hard boiled eggs, even like than your dad. And your dad is a very precise to the minute, set the timer, you know, the whole thing. Um, and I, there are, like you said, the devil is in the details. How do we do this? I do not put salt in mine. I bring it to a boil and then I take it off the stove and I just leave it sit there forever or until I remember or <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Um, but there's also something about using room temperature eggs versus cold eggs. So all my eggs are room temperature because they're fresh. You know, they're from my chickens. Um, if you buy them from the store and you keep them in the refrigerator and you decide to make hard boiled eggs, you're, you, you know, do we need to let them get to room temperature before we do it? Is that what you found in your research? Yeah. So, again, there's there's a hundred ways to do it. And I found a little bit of everything. I found some that said you should never use grocery store eggs. It should only be farm fresh eggs. And other ones that say, take your grocery store eggs out of the fridge and, and let them sit on the counter. Um, and then other ones that didn't specify at all. Right. So well, it, and, and from, from the homestead perspective, there's also this, again, debate about whether fresh eggs are better for hard boiled eggs or whether you need to let them sit for a week before you use them. Something about the way that the membrane inside the shell um, has gotten air into it. See, shells are permeable. They're not a solid surface. So air gets into the egg as it's just sitting around, right? And a little bit of air gets in between that membrane then and the yolk and the white. So ostensibly the more air that is in there should make them easier to peel i don't know that they're <laughs> you can go online and you can talk get any one of those cooking people and they'll say i have the perfect recipe for making hard boiled eggs they peel clean every time yeah not in my experience <laughs> yeah i'll tell you what peeling 36 eggs uh, was a mistake um <laughs> i also didn't end up with 36 because as my Patience wore out. Uh, my egg peeling got a little uh, less successful, we'll say. Yes. I know one of those methods I've seen that I haven't ever tried, but it feels like it would work right, is to put the eggs in a container of water and shake them. And it cracks the eggshells enough to let water seep into it, and then you peel them. Okay. I've never tried that. Maybe for 36 eggs it would be worth it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Although I was out of I was out of containers to use, so <laughs> <laughs> it seems to be a theme, Rick, that you don't have enough dishes and containers to make your dishes. <laughs> yeah, there's there's a, there's a couple themes that run through this show. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I made three different deviled egg recipes. Um, I had never made any of them before, and they varied from incredibly easy to do to incredibly difficult to do. Um, but they were all really, really good. Huh? You didn't have any failures. I had a failure. So that's, <laughs> let's, let's, let me hear about what you made. I wished I could be there to have tested them with you, but next well, time. That, they'll definitely get made again. Uh, okay. So, so why don't we go, why don't we go back and forth? Um, okay. So I'll start with my uh, smoky grilled deviled eggs. Okay. Um, these had, chipotle adobo in them wow and they were phenomenal wow um so actually so, in the mix yeah uh so you start you start with your eggs uh and you actually throw them on the grill you char them on the grill um once once you've cut them in half and emptied them um 
So you're putting your, your halved egg whites on the grill. Okay. Um, and that for me didn't add a whole lot. It wasn't, uh, it, it more of an inconvenience than anything. It didn't seem to add a whole lot of flavor. The adobo, however, was, was phenomenal. Um, wow. I think that this one not grilled might be my go-to deviled egg. Um, cause without all the grilling and stuff, you're really, you're not doing anything different other than Dijon mustard and the adobo. Okay. Um, other than that, it's pretty much just a, a run of the mill deviled egg. Do you uh, think it would have made a difference if it had been in a smoker? Would it have added a smoky flavor to the white is what I'm wondering. Probably. Um, I'll have to, I'll have to experiment with that in the future. Um, you know, the, the concept was to kind of get that, that feel. I think a charcoal grill would have been better than the gas grill. Oh, um, yeah. And also, if I had a, a finer grate, like a, a vegetable grate for the grill, um, but I, I didn't have one handy. <laughs> I have a shrimp basket that I was going to use. And I decided that wasn't what I wanted to do either. <laughs> but yeah, that one was, that one was very good. Um, that one was, like I said, it'll probably be my replacement for a standard double egg so it's like you said you, the recipes that you these original recipes had this tabasco or some kind of hot sauce in it so you replaced that with the adobo correct did you have any chilies in there too no chilies um i put a little bit of paprika into the mix um okay. and then a lot of paprika on top okay and again the type of paprika you're using a smoked paprika versus like the Hungarian paprika m might also make a huge difference. I know my mom used paprika just as decoration, basically, you know, because it didn't really have much flavor, but a really good paprika might add another layer of depth to that. Another depth of layer, something like yeah, that. Yeah, that works. <laughs> yeah, I, I only use smoked paprika. Um, I don't have standard paprika in the house. Um, cause I like that, that smoky hot flavor. It's more, more <laughs> what I'm looking for. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. And did you take any of those to work? Did you get any feedback from anybody else? Yes. So the smoked were not the favorite. They were, uh, they were the least favorite. Okay. So, which I, I can't explain. <laughs> Well, they didn't like Jello cheesecake either, so well, who's to say? <laughs> all different issue. <laughs> so, what was your first one? Well, the first one I made was my mom's um, deviled eggs, which you, you know, instead of cutting them lengthwise down the egg, you cut them horizontally, laterally, and you make little um, looks like broken egg edge to it. Um, and that's just yellow mustard and mayonnaise, but not mayonnaise. It's got to be Miracle Whip. Be miracle Again, Whip. here we here are the distinctions. Um, your dad's family always used mayonnaise. We always used Miracle Whip, and there's just no comparison <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. Um, salt and pepper. And then the piece de resistance was, is always the decoration on top. And that is usually a sliced gherkin, gherkin sweet pickle. I did not have any, so I used relish, and it's not the same presentation. <laughs> um, but we also use natural uh, flowers, edible flowers, or parsley, or dill, um, just to jazz up the color on it a little bit. And again, presentation is always important, too. you got to have them plated in a way that is appealing. One thing about the um uh, deviled eggs the way that that my mom made them half the other direction is that they're hard to sit you have to actually cut a flat bottom on them so that they'll sit on the tray um and often when you go to grab them you end up with a handful of innards <laughs> but that's okay because we're all family and you just wipe it off so yeah. do, do you use the tops and the bottoms oh yes absolutely yeah, so you get just as much egg and just as much filling. It's just that it's oriented the other direction. And it, everybody says, oh, it's such a pain to do those little. It's really not. It's maybe just because I've been doing it for 50 years or more. 
<laughs> anyway, <laughs> so that was the first one. That was your favorite when you were a kid. That's that's because it was the only thing we ever served. Um, now there's so many, you know, egg recipes with avocado and bacon and yeah. all kinds of incredible, wonderful ideas that I wished I had done that all along because now these seem a little boring, actually. But your dad did finish them up. Look at these split just like that. So it's a favorite still. It was it was really hard to narrow it down uh, to three recipes I wanted to make. There were dozens and dozens, and I, yes. I think I went from a list of twenty down to down to my last three. Yeah, the variations are really endless. I mean, because truly, egg is pretty neutral. I mean, somebody who doesn't like eggs will tell you it doesn't. It's a horrible taste, but pretty much it's a neutral taste. And as long as you keep those proportions again, like you said, there's some way to make it creamy, another way to give it some spice. You know, those are the basics, and you can switch those out. Instead of mayo, use avocado, and, you know, it's just a matter of then switch, switching out what you really want in there. Uh, my second one was uh, the swordfish ceviche deviled eggs. That sounded so good. So uh, I won't take up all the time uh, to tell you how to make ceviche. Uh, however, if you haven't had swordfish ceviche, you absolutely should. Um, so prep for these was, was relatively straightforward. Um, I just, I made my ceviche with a little bit of chili lime rub and horseradish. Um, and then added a little bit of chili or lime rub and horseradish into the mix for the deviled eggs. Uh, and then I actually made it two ways because this was so off the beaten path that I wasn't exactly sure how to do it. Um, uh, so I made half the eggs with ceviche topping. And I made half the eggs with the ceviche mixed into the mix. Um, they were both good. It is much better as a topping. It, it it stands alone. It's more like a ceviche deviled egg instead of a ceviche deviled egg. Um, yeah. And it the, the, it allowed the flavors to kind of stand on their own a little bit more. Um, I, I think if I hadn't had the two of them to compare, I would have thought that the mixed in one was just fine. But having them side by side, it is much, much better as a topping. The, the flavors really stand alone. Um, and using the using the horseradish and the chili lime in both allows them to really link together. Because egg and swordfish, not necessarily uh, flavors that you think would go together. But um, using those like ingredients really allowed it to tie the whole dish together. And they're so good. Wow. Now, did any of that make it to work? I brought some of each to work. Um, okay. All, all three with the extra variation for the for the swordfish, and they went fast. They uh, went really, really fast. I think I I didn't hear from anyone that it was their favorite, but they were the first ones gone. So at, at least one person ate <laughs> ate enough uh, of them. I want to try that, or you'll have to make it for me next time I'm there. Well, the nice thing about ceviche is you can make it pretty much anywhere because uh, it takes absolutely no equipment. Right, right, right. <laughs> Okay. So, yeah, that was a nice, easy, low-impact one, and the horseradish was really good in the eggs. Now, was this fresh horseradish, or was it horseradish cream, like so, already prepared horseradish? Yeah, this is prepared horseradish. Okay. So is that what you used as the um, cream base for the yolk mixture? Yes. Okay. Yum. Yeah. That would be really good. Yum. I just pulled... Horseradish, I don't know if you know, grows like a weed, even here in the middle of the mountains where nothing grows well. And um, I just pulled some out of the garden because it was in the way. I was growing where I didn't want it. And so I have a fresh root right now in the sink. Hmm. We might have to try that tonight. A little grated horseradish in there. Yes. Yeah. Maybe uh, maybe some kefir cheese or goat cheese. I think you're on to something yeah. there. <laughs> you got me hungry now. This always happens when I talk to you. I start getting hungry. Um, I'm curious about how it was for you filling. That, you know, the, there's a fine motor skill in trying to get that goop into the holes. I'm just wondering how that was, especially with the ceviche in there, bulk-wise. So I'll throw, the, I'll throw one of the videos up here right now. I piped all of these. Um, so, so, so 
piped. I had uh, snack bags, and I cut the corner <laughs> off of it. But but I I piped all of them, and I think for the most part they they ended up looking pretty good. Wow. Um, the the swordfish ceviche in the mix was by far the hardest just because of the the volume of it. I thought about processing it uh-huh. um, to make it a little smoother. Uh, uh-huh. But by the time I got to it, I'm just I was just so done. <laughs> <laughs> I spent four hours making deviled eggs, and I was I was done. Um, so I just cut the hole a little bit bigger, and then uh, just rolled it in my hands to like break down some of the bigger pieces, and and it, it piped pretty well. Uh, you can see it on the screen here. They they look chunky, and they're definitely the ugliest eggs. Um, but but it, it it worked just fine. Okay. All right. Cool. Very cool. I'm so impressed that you're piping your hard <laughs> Wow. It's, so, it's, a, it's a pain in the ass to like, I don't like to touch it. So like if I have to like <laughs> touch in the spoon, like I'm just, I'm not doing it. Yeah, that's what I, yeah. I was just, as you said that though, it occurred to me, I wonder if the whole process of um, smashing the egg yolk with the cream and whatever could be done in a bag. You know how, like, you have to smash oh. it with a fork to make it smooth? I wonder if yeah. you couldn't put it all in the bag and smush it with your fingers like that. Probably. Right? I, I, re- I really thought about using the uh, uh, immersion blender to do oh, it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but then I couldn't find it because I don't think I have one. <laughs> <laughs> it's on my wish list. Yeah. <laughs> you could get one for yourself and me at the same time. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Christmas shopping done. <laughs> well, you know, here off grid, I'm always trying to find non-electric ways to do things. And also because, you know, water is a thing, right? I don't like to waste water and I hate to do dishes. That, hey, if I can find a way to not do dishes and and have to not wash, you know, the goop off my hands, and that might actually work. I'm going to have to try that next time, too. Yeah, worth a shot. <laughs> right? uh, this does, this, does the same thing. Yep, yep, absolutely. Okay. You even hit it with a rolling pin or something. Right. Yeah, you and your rolling pin now, you know how to do that with your graham crackers. Okay. Uh, what was so the next, next one? one I made was the German stuffed mint eggs, which had to be converted a little bit because the recipe I got was actually from the 13th century, I think it was. So some of the ingredients needed translation. And so this was my best my best effort at replicating it. And um, it was probably better than the the third one, but still very unusual. The mint in there, in my head, I was thinking it would contribute like dill, but it was a completely different profile. And (laughs) it's all my homegrown mint. And so I know it's fresh and it's, you know, but completely, completely different profile again this um you hard boil the eggs but then you have them stuffed back in with a raw egg mixture and then it's cooked again um and this the the raw egg mixture that it's cooked in actually has a sweetener so here we have it's sweet and mint with stuffed egg it it was a very strange combination and like i said it was it's more like a meal rather than an appetizer it, you know you cut it with a knife and a fork and you eat it that way because it became kind of a a casserole almost i guess it kind of had that kind of a feel to it a, a casserole um the other thing is i am not a lover of sage and this had sage in it and if i were to make it again i would definitely leave the sage out i did it because it was what the recipe called for and i wanted to be as you know true to it as i could um but i i'm not a sage lover maybe that mint would have come through fresher and more alive and more sweet without the sage in there to kind of pull it down. I, I, I don't know. I'm just not a sage lover. Um, so uh, anyway, it was good. It was not what we think of when we think of deviled eggs. Um, but this would have been the stuffed eggs, which probably were the precursor to deviled eggs, at least would, in, in would, the European culture. Would you make it again? I probably would not 
Um, if I were entertaining, if, you know, I used to do these programs when we would focus on the seasons, right? And so spring, eggs is a symbol of season, the spring season. You know, it's the new life and fertility and all that kind of stuff. So if I were doing some kind of a seasonal um, potluck or something like that, I might introduce a dish like this only because it connects us to a more um, uh, land-based experience, you know, eating the things we grow in our gardens and the things that come from the chickens in the yard and, you know, that kind of thing. But your dad didn't really appreciate it at all. Um, uh, he just, you know, you say deviled eggs and you can't wrap your head around something that looks and tastes so different. So I probably would not. No. Okay, fair enough. It's my only other taste tester too, so I don't have a lot of in, a lot of input. <laughs> yeah, dogs aren't the best uh, judge of flavor. <laughs> the, did. Oh, the chickens enjoyed. Actually, I think the dog did get some of it, um, but she's a dog, so <laughs> there's no accounting for what she eats. <laughs> uh, so this next one was definitely the prettiest one that I made. Uh, these are the smoked salmon deviled eggs. Mm. Um, my God, it was good. It was so good. <laughs> <laughs> so it's essentially just a base deviled egg recipe. This one does call for cream cheese. Oh. Um, so you mix a little bit of cream cheese in, a little bit of lemon juice, um, and then I also added some chives. Uh. So... I took uh, just this is a real nice smoked salmon um, and beat it into the mixture. I diced it real fine and then beat it into the mixture. Um, and then with a little bit of chives on top and then roe as well. Um, oh. Of course, I couldn't get salmon roe, so I ended up using uh, black lump fish. Um, okay. But I, I like roe no matter where it came from. So it was it was very, very good. They're very pretty. Um, and I actually think the black lumpfish roe made it look better than it would have with the salmon roe because uh, of the coloring. Um, okay. They're they're very decorative. They're very pretty, and they were so good. Um, if you ever had the uh, the salmon schmear from Einstein Brothers Bagels, uh, uh, kind of tasted like that. And as soon as I made that realization in my head, um, I realized that that mix would be so much better on on a carb on on something like a bagel yes yes um, so i will absolutely be making this mix again uh but not necessarily for deviled eggs oh uh, but instead as as uh for a sandwich or a bagel or something along those lines Ooh, a sandwich spread yes. yeah yeah it's, it was very very good and like i said this was by far the prettiest one that i made uh, there's also the first one I made, so there's probably an effort drop off after that. <laughs> um, but, but great looking. I, I, I threw up a spoiler on my Instagram when I made these, I left it up for like two hours and, and people, people were all over it. So, <laughs> so did, so did you, the salmon completely disintegrate or, um, yeah, um, no, you had some chunks in there. Um, like I, okay. I, I, I diced it, um, like a fine. garlic. That's like fine or like onion dice that fine? Like an onion dice. Okay. And then uh, I left myself a little bit of salmon to eat as well, but <laughs> yeah. um, I wonder about um, using it as a sa uh, sandwich spread or even on top of a bagel and then using that um, everything but the bagel seasoning. Mm. You know, pre mixed seasoning in there. Yeah. Yeah, I, I could. <laughs> I'm going to have to give that a shot. Right? So would you put, if you were to make it against the sandwich spread, would you put the the egg yolk in there? Would you, not, not would you put the mix in the egg white, but would you use the egg yolk cooked as part I, of the mix? Absolutely. I, I think but it, it increased the protein level. And, and it contributed to the flavor. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and the texture, if nothing else, you know, it, it's really what what made it work. Mm -hmm. um, so, like, I'm sure it would be good without it, but I I would want to recreate this exact flavor profile because it was it was really really good. 
Yeah. So I, something just occurred to me, and I, I just wanted to ask, you had mentioned, and of course, I think I, I even have pictures of the eggs I destroyed <laughs> trying to peel them. <laughs> So what is this, an etiquette thing? Like we're not allowed to put an egg that's chipped out like on the serving platter? Like, what, Correct. Who made the rule that said, <laughs> I mean, or is that just like you feed your kids before the party with the ones that are all beat up? Yeah, so so my rule anytime I'm, uh, you know, if you, if you follow me on social, you know I like to make all kinds of ridiculous food. But my rule is that Instagram eats first. So... So bastard eggs go off on a side plate and then when the okay. pictures are done, then they can go on the platter with everything else because <laughs> it's not for the people I'm serving it to. It's for Instagram. Okay. <laughs> I would be curious, anybody watching this, if they have a percentage of eggs that end up on the bastard plate, I'm just curious. Cause I think I ended up with maybe two out of how many did I make? I think I made a dozen eggs altogether. And I think I ended up with two that were bad. So what's that percentage? I mean, that's that's a pretty high percentage of fail on the peeling. So I'm just curious as to what other people like. Do do other people what there is their percentage on fail? And do they put it on the plate? You know, because I I did I put mine on the plate, and you can see I kind of just turned it around, so <laughs> so you couldn't see the the bastion part. But I'm not gonna waste food, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you should absolutely not throw it away, but you know, it doesn't have to make it into your pictures. <laughs> okay, I like the Instagram angle. Yep. <laughs> okay, well, the last one that I made was um, a Scandina Scandinavian inspired. Um, I went German with my German roots and I went Scandinavian, um, which would probably have had caviar in it. But, okay, you think you had trouble finding <laughs> <laughs> salmon roe yeah there's not anything like that here so instead i decided i would use herring herring is huge right and so um i actually had a can of kippers which kippers are smoked herring so i thought well what? so it kind of turned into a smoked salmon herring <laughs> exercise um and then what was different about this one also is that i used kefir cheese so for the people who don't know kefir is um a gelatinous living bacteria form that you use to culture milk products so the same way that yogurt or cheese is made you introduce a bacteria and then the bacteria eats the sugars out of the milk product and makes it sour, right? So kefir cheese is the same thing. It makes a liquid. Um, oftentimes in the grocery store, you can find it as kind of like a liquid yogurt. Um, I make my own and then I strain it one more time to make it thick. So it ends up thick like cream cheese or whatever variation you want. So I used that in this recipe. Um, most closely replicated would be yogurt, maybe your sour cream. It's a, it's more sour than mayo. Definitely not as sweet as cream cheese. Um, so you had the sour and this smoked herring thing going on. And, um, then I just couldn't resist because I, your dad was grossed out by the whole <laughs> herring experiment. <laughs> so I had to put anchovy on the top. <laughs> And I didn't have any rolled anchovies with capers, which would have been perfect, absolutely mm -hmm. perfect. Mm -hmm. So I just used a little slice of anchovy, and it, it really threw it over the top, and he wouldn't even try them. Um, <laughs> I actually liked these better than the German stuffed eggs, um, but it would have been better, obviously, with roe. And um, it didn't, the smoke taste from the herring wasn't strong enough. Again, I think it's like your recipe where it kind of got lost. The ceviche got lost in the mixture. The, you know, the flavor wasn't as as identifiable mm -hmm. because I put it inside. Again, if I were to do it again, I might put a slice on top of the egg instead of in it because it just kind of got lost in the mixture. Um, but I would make it again. I would definitely make it again. That was yeah. a throwback to my cousins in Sweden. Yeah, I'm looking at the pictures now, and it looks really good. <laughs> but no anchovies! 
I don't I don't know that I have ever cooked with herring. Have you had herring? Mm-hmm. Like the herring in the vinegar or the herring in the sour cream? Uh-huh. Yeah. But you don't know if you've ever cooked with it. I don't know that many well, you it's hard to find fresh herring in the Midwest. Certainly in Yeah. Uh, have you had kippers? I don't think so. Okay, so they're you know they're in a can like where the anchovies and the sardines would be in the store where the canned fish is, and it's it's just a smoked fish. It's really mild, and um, you should try it. It's yeah, it's I'm good. Gonna have to, that also, have to go to the store. this um this recipe, like you said, I think it needed a carb. So if I were to make it again, I might make it as a spread and put it on wasa bread, hardtack, um, mm. like they eat in Sweden. That might be a good. Yeah. Maybe like a Ritz cracker for me. <laughs> that leaves, that's a sweet profile then, you know? But yeah, they're really buttery. It would work with a, maybe, maybe those cheap ones you bought. <laughs> maybe. Oh, yeah. Hey, <laughs> if, you're an Ald, if you're an Aldi person, I love Aldi. Aldi's got all kinds of good stuff. Their crackers suck. <laughs> they're <laughs> awful. <laughs> If it ain't a Ritz, it don't sit right. That's right. <laughs> Knock off Ritz is not the way to go. <laughs> right. All right. Well, those are our deviled eggs, stuffed eggs, boiled eggs. Right. Um, <laughs> you know, we, uh, we wanted to wait a little bit after Easter so that uh, if you're inspired to make them, you're not completely egged out. <laughs> um <laughs> So you know, go ahead and uh, drop us a note in the comments your favorite deviled egg recipe. Yes. Uh, and definitely let us know how you boil your eggs because that's, uh, yes. that's something I need to know more about. Mm-hmm. Right. And I want to hear about the percentage of those bastard plate ones. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have not yet selected our next dish. Uh, so keep your eyes on the socials and on our feed. Make sure you like and subscribe, because uh, then and you don't have to worry about what missing you'd it. you'd like to see. Also, we want to know what you want to see, because uh, this is so much fun. I mean, we have such a good time doing this, and we could go crazy. But what do you want to see? Like, what recipes interest you? Yes. Yeah. So, hey, thanks for joining us. This has been Heritage Cooking, and we'll see you next time. Bye.